If you grew up with a Commodore 64 like I did, you probably got pretty used to just being able to edit stuff that was displayed on the screen. So I can list this program, I can run this program, I can see the typo that I made, and I can go back up here to line 10, that's the line number, line 10, and just hit enter, and then come back down to list, hit enter again, and I see that I get hello world now printed, and if I hit enter again, then I just ran the program. And so, you know, if you were like me again, you would probably sometimes do this. You would click on something and get a syntax error because the basic interpreter tried to execute this hello world. Or you would just be casually entering and you would get this out of data error. Now, this confused me for many years and in a way it kind of damaged my brain. I did learn eventually as a kid that ready was actually being interpreted by the basic interpreter as read y. And that's where I get the out of data error. I never really understood the why out of data. Where was this data supposed to be coming from? Why couldn't it read the data? And also, you know, it's kind of weird to those of us used to modern programming languages that ready as one word would actually be interpreted as read why. So you can, well, get this error as many times as you want to. So I decided to go ahead and dig into this just a little bit and have a better appreciation for what it means. Now, first of all, if you typed in any significant amount of basic programs in your Commodore 64, you are probably used to seeing large data blocks. And it would be something like this down at the end of the program. You would have data and then a bunch of numbers. And then when you ran the program, it would do something with this data. So if I run it, I get hello world printed still, but now my program consists of two lines. One is the one that prints hello world. The other one has these data statements. I haven't done anything with these data statements, but the basic interpreter ran them. So now if I hit read y, well, I get the syntax error because of the dot, interestingly, but if I print Y, I get the value 23. So if I read Y again, and then print Y, I get the value 23 again. And it's, well, incrementing at some rate anyhow. So what we've done is we've filled in this block of data, and when we read Y, we're reading the next chunk of data into the variable Y. And it's incrementing through this list here. And then we get out of data error again once it has actually reached the end of this data. So we can dig into this a little bit more. Let's go ahead and run the program again. And now we've refilled this data buffer with these values 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. So I'm going to pull up the Commodore 64 memory map here. This is my personal favorite representation of it. And if we do a quick little browse here, we will see that the values, memory values 63 and 64 is the basic line number of the current data item for read. And then values 65 and 66 are the pointer to the next data item for read. And 67 and 68 is the pointer to the input result during a read. Let's go ahead and poke around in memory a little bit, or shall I say, peek around in memory a little bit and see what we get. So we've got memory locations 65 and 66. Okay, so memory location 65 is zero. 
and memory location 66 is 8. Let's go ahead and read why. 66 is still 8, uh, but now we're at 32. Okay, so it looks like it is actually skipping uh, four bytes, three bytes at a time. Interesting. So it looks like if we were to bother to go and actually read the documentation for the data statement, that this starts to make a little bit more sense because it can hold, well, anything. It can hold numbers or strings and you can apparently store them in all kinds of ways here. So the data could be scattered around memory. It probably is a length and then uh, the data value actually that is being stored. And then we can see that there are other statements such as the restore command that resets the pointer of the current data position back to the program start. So the next read starts over again. And then if we click on the documentation for read, it looks like it can read any kind of variable. So let's go ahead and play with this a little bit more. We can also do data statements directly from the command prompt here, but we're going to edit the code again. So now presumably we have the data lepticus in here And I'm not used to typing on a Commodore 64 keyboard. Syntax error in line 100. Interesting. And it turns out that it wasn't really a syntax error at line 100. We had provided a string, but I had tried to load it into a non-string variable and Yes, you have to put a dollar sign after variable to make a string variable in Commodore 64 basic. So now if I print Y string, uh, this is my head, Y string. That's how I always read this as a kid. It's a dollar sign. And similarly, I said that this aspect of Commodore 64 basic kind of damaged my brain and it's because now as an adult still some 35 years after I first programmed in Commodore 64 basic I just can't read the word ready anymore I always see the word ready and read it as read y and I very often see a dollar sign and in my head I read it as string so there you go that is why i was always seeing this out of data error on my commodore 64 a little look into how data statements work and the internal program counter that the commodore 64's basic keeps track of and well just a little aside on how string variables worked in commodore 64 basic and that's about as complicated as these variables could get. Also, I had in my programs, everything was A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Y, X, Z. Um, it was not very good naming for my variable names. So thanks for watching this episode of the fill in the blank programmer. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe. I'm planning to be doing more random episodes about random topics that happen to interest me and are related to programming or programming adjacent in some way.